So today I will finish the story about Maxwell equations written in any curvilinear um, system of coordinates. This is very important and this was one of my goals when I began this talk. So we remember this it was a two form. What is two form? It is a covariant, totally skew symmetric tensor with two indices, a black box with two entries, and if you feed him with two vectors, it will produce a number in such a way that first of all it is bilinear. Yeah, so when the first entry is fixed, the result depends linearly with respect to the second and vice versa. The bilinear and totally skew symmetric is if you exchange the order, the result will get minus sign. Yeah? Oh. So every such a two form, and this is electromagnetic field. And this is the beginning. Of course, people did not discover electromagnetism this way. This is a conclusion of, of Einstein first, uh, <coughs> Maxwell, then uh, uh, Einstein, uh, Lorentz, and then Einstein. But I want to present it in the simplest way, and I believe that the present status is much, much simpler than the one which was understood by, by Maxwell, for instance. Okay, so this F is, is surely F mu nu dx mu dx mu. Every two form is a combination of these basic two forms, yeah? And the uh, coefficients are called f mu nu, and either you may write down the table of those coefficients, yeah, in many books. So first of all, this might, it must be anti-symmetric, why? Because this machinery is anti-symmetric. Therefore, if we, if we put anything here and we divide it into a symmetric and non-symmetric part, the symmetric part vanishes when uh, <coughs> contracted with something which is anti-symmetric. Yeah? Because if I change here and I change here, here did not change anything if this is symmetric. Here we change to minus, which means that this combination <coughs> is equal to minus the same. And the only number which is equal to minus itself is zero. Yeah? Therefore, if this is symmetric, the symmetric part vanishes, only anti-symmetric part. Therefore, from the very beginning, we assume that the table of those coefficients is anti-symmetric. And <coughs> we may identify this table of, by the way, by x mu, I, sorry, x0, x1, x2, x3, and very often, I just use different letters. Of course, if I consider a generic form in many dimensions and so on and so on, so I cannot use different letters because I, I have at my disposal only 24 letters in Latin alphabet and in Greek it is even less or more? I don't know, but roughly speaking the same. So, if I know that there are only four coordinates, then I, mean I can use different letters, yeah? 
So x0 is time. Now, at the very beginning, when I began this discourse, I was using the letter tau because I want to have tau, uh, the time measured in the same um, units as, as the distance, yeah? But then, of course, I forgot, I have forgotten or I have abandoned this. This is simply time. From the very beginning, of course, if people started to uh, consider time and space as completely different, then, of course, time is in seconds, uh, distance is in meters, and we cannot uh, mix them. But in general, in uh, relativity theory, the, the main conclusion was that no, 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 time and space are only two different aspects which mi mix together when we pass to different, and therefore it is very useful to have them measured in the, uh, with the same units. So this is why I have chosen this letter tau to, to stress that this tau is nothing but ta, uh, time uh, time c. Yeah? C is meters per seconds times seconds, therefore it is in meters. But now I believe we are on a slightly higher level and we understand that this... I very often tell to my colleagues, which always keep this C, that C have, has been measured to an enormous accuracy, and it is one. <laughs> what does it mean? It means that the uh, C, the velocity of light, is the same in any uh, system of reference. It is constant. If it is a constant, uh, one of the con fundamental constant, we may just use it as a proportionality coefficient between centimeters and inches. For instance, we may measure the length of this cable in centimeters, but we may measure it in inches. And if we want to translate one to the other, we need a constant. This constant is 2.4. 2.4 centimeters per inch, yeah? So, in this sense, this number C, namely around 300,000 kilometers per second, is just plays the same role as 2.4 centimeters per inch. Yeah, just to change the units. Okay, but I, so I will al always put time here, this difference between tau and t was because of pedagogical reasons and now I believe you are uh, sufficiently <laughs> clever so I will forget about this simple. Okay, so either we in order to identify this two form with the electromagnetic field, either we write down the table and name it. This is minus e x. I may write down the one or x. Zero is tau. One is x and so on. Yeah. Minus e y minus e. Z. Now here I don't write because you know, 
this must be anti-symmetric, therefore this is plus ex plus and so on, yeah, because this must be anti-symmetric. Of course, if it is anti-symmetric, then we have zeros on the, on the diagonal. And now, what stands here? For instance, here, uh, <laughs> I always forget, this is number uh, two and number three, two, three, so this is B, X. This is two, no, uh, this is two, no, one, three, one, three, one, zero, two. one, two. Why? B, Y. One, two. So this is B, Z. B, Z. Excuse me, no. this three. <laughs> yeah? You remember this. B is B, X, D, Y, D, Z, plus some in many, in many textbooks they write plus cyclic permutation, yeah? Okay. So this is BZ, because this is 2, 0, no. This is 0, 1, 0, 1, 2. So, so this is, yeah. So this is Z. This is two, uh, no, this is one, three, one, three minus two, B, Y, and this is two, three, two, three, two, three, B, X. Okay, and here. So this is one way to and call, uh, identify uh, electromagnet. And here, minus, yeah, because it must be in place symmetric, so it is sufficient to fill the upper uh, half of this uh, matrix. And another way to encode it is to write down it in the following way, that first we select those uh, terms which contain dx0, which means dt, yeah? So, it is dt, and here there is another one form, and we identify this one form with electric field with minus sign. And, and next we have uh, those terms which do not contain time, there are three of them, and we identify this with B. And now, where is the? Why sometimes do I use just uh, uppercase letter? And here I insist to have a calligraphic. Why? Because this is not. A, vector, but it is vector density. I have shown you because this we may say that B I is equal uh, no F K L is equal epsilon K L M B, M. Oh. This is correct identification. Yeah? For instance, 1, 2 is B, 3. Ah. And 2, 1 is minus B, 3 because this is totally anti-symmetric. So this is B, Z. Okay. Now, if we work in uh, Cartesian coordinates, then there is no difference, yeah? Because 
what is the difference between the vector and vector density? That if we pass to different coordinates, we must multiply it by some determinant of the Jacobian. And of course, if we uh, remain in <coughs> always in the realm of Cartesian coordinate, then the uh, Jacobian has determinant one. Therefore, we may forget about this difference. But if we want to have formulae which are uh, valid in any system of coordinates, then it is no longer true. Then, of course, we must keep difference between vectors and vector density. And what is the difference? That if we want, if we know this B, if we know this B K, so so how to calculate this vector B K? How no, simply uh, divided by square root of the determinant of the metric, yeah, or vice versa. The density is vector density is always equal to square root of the determinant of the metric times vector. And this is, now, these formulae are valid in any system of course. Yeah. And now, first of all, I have shown you that df equals zero will repeat this part of my talk, that the df equals zero, I, I still keep it open because I would like that you discover this theorem that d is zero. So I, my conclusion was that this equals zero is nothing but one pair of Maxwell equations. Namely, you remember among four Maxwell equations, there are those which are homogeneous, which means that they have zero on there, and inhomogeneous. These are homogeneous Maxwell equations, those who have zero on the right hand side. Okay, so let us discover this. Practically, I have done this calculation last time, but I want, I realize, realize that probably it was too fast, therefore let us repeat. Okay, so if we, what was the recipe to calculate the exterior derivative? And the exterior derivative is probably the most important uh, structure in mathematics because it does not depend upon uh, metric uh, upon anything. If you just have a uh, differential form, you know what is df. Okay. So if so, what are those? Here you have, for instance, e x dx plus and so on and so on. Now, the recipe was the following, that you, df was df mu nu treated as a function times, this skew-symmetric times, dx mu dx nu which simply means that whatever stands here, we must take the derivative with respect to all possible co coordinates and put d of this uh, coordinate at the beginning. So I claim that df, first of all, will be dt dE. Why? Because here those E 
are not at the beginning. If here is dx dx, so d, this dx, I might, if I differentiate, I will put it here, and but the recipe was to put it at the very beginning. Yeah? Therefore, I, I must exchange it with dt. And this is why this minus goes away. Okay. So this is derivative of v of e treated as a one form on three-dimensional space. D x dy dz. Okay. Now, of course, it is not useful. In principle, I have also to take derivative with respect to time. But then I would write down dt. But dt, dt is zero because it is anti-symmetric. Yeah? This is why we take the derivatives of E only with respect to space coordinates. Right? Because if I take the, what is D? The collection of derivative of what stands here with respect to T times DT. Derivative with respect to X times DX and so on. But derivative with respect to T times DT gives zero result because dt yeah therefore now plus so this is the end of the story as far as this term is concerned now this first of all it must be differentiated with respect to time right so here for instance was dx d y d z so I differentiate it with respect to time and I put dt at the beginning at the beginning yeah so at the very end I obtain dt and here b dot right but, but this is only differentiation with respect to time but also I have to differentiate it with respect to space coordinate. So it will be plus. There will be no time because this does not contain dt. And when I differentiate differentiation with respect to time is already done. So what remains? Only d b treat it as a two-form depending upon three coordinates, yeah? Okay, this is what I have done previously. Now, we put together these things, dt times, and, and here, d e plus b dot. plus d v. And this is precisely equal zero, and this is nothing but uh, Faraday, Faraday equation, as we will see soon. This means that b dot equal d e, we will just Calculate so this is one of the equation, and this is nothing but a divergence of of b again equal zero. So finally, the collection of Faraday equation plus Gauss equation for magnetic field is nothing but the theorem that df, that f is a closed form, df equals zero. Now, <laughs> I have, this is my statement, but not yet proved for you. 
but I am going to prove. So first of all, let us calculate dB. Okay, so we remember that B is B X dy dz plus B y dz dx plus B z dx d and now what was the recipe for the exterior derivative ha, instead of I have those differentials and here I must put d b x right what is d b x dbx over dx times dx yeah, so there will be a term of this kind so first of all it will be, I will write it in this way, dx bx and now dx dy dz ok, so this is first term but then I should put also dy bx dy. But this gives zero. Why? Because y meets dy meets dy and this is zero. So it is not useful to write this term or similarly dz bz dz which also belongs to the derivative of this function does not give any contribution because if I multiply it by what, what was here it will be zero therefore what remains it remains only dx bx now We must calculate exterior derivative of this term. So, dx times dx dz dx. Ah, this is zero because dx means dx. Right? Now, dy by dy dz dx. Ah, so this is important. So dy by and then I must put dy dz dx. Okay? And again the derivative of the uh, of by with respect to z times dz gives no contribution because dz means dz and this is zero. So the only term which remains from differentiating this term is what I have written here. And finally I take, I differentiate the last part. So, how do I differentiate the last part? Uh, so, I first, I must first do dx bz dx and multiply it external, external name, with respect to dx. But then dx b dx, no, this does not give any contribution. The same with the derivative with respect to y because dy means dy and finally what remains is only dz bz and dz and what remains here dx dy but now observe that this is equal to that 
and equal to that. Do you see? Because if I take here this dx and exchange it with dz, I will get minus sign, but then I will also put it every such <laughs> change of position gives minus sign, but here two such transpositions are necessary, therefore this is equal to that. You see? Also here, because here I take dz and transpose it twice. Therefore this is equal to that. To the, so finally, confusion is that db is equal uh, yeah. No, so this is db. Sorry. db is equal. So this is equal. dx b x plus d y b y plus d z b z and now dx dy dz. Yeah? So you see, this is if we calculate this in Cartesian coordinates, then this is then B uh, calligraphic is the same as just vector field B and this is nothing but the divergence. Yeah? Therefore it vanishes. What is the Um, superiority of, of writing here B script instead of B capital. The superiority of this formula is that this is true in any curvilinear system of coordinates. Whereas, if I put it here on, on the vector, like B, then it is true only in Cartesian coordinates. But this formula is universal. Okay, so you see that indeed this is equal zero. This is first. Uh, Second, just a Gauss law for magnetic field, yeah? That the, using the Faraday's language, uh, um, the uh, fo force lines of, the lines of magnetic field have no end. They are all, yeah? Are no ends because uh, the, the end of force lines means that there is some charge here and there is no magnetic charge. This terminology introduced by, uh, by Faraday, of course, it was very pedagogic, but it was an extremely important step towards understanding what, what happens, really. Pedagogically, it was extremely important. Okay, so you see that if I calculate this, the exterior derivative of f, I get just two terms. The one which contains dt and the other which does not contain dt. The, the second one, I have already shown you that this vanishes and this is equipped, the vanishing of this term means that the magnetic, uh, Gauss law for magnetic field is fulfilled. Okay, now I want to show you that this is nothing but the Faraday law. Yeah, okay, so. Can you repeat why you have a positive sign there? Like dt 
where to see an E as you you said to, to, I don't know. I what? Because I at the very beginning, yeah, I differentiate this. So this part contains already time. Therefore, uh, derivative of of what stands here with respect to dt does not give any contribution because the dt means dt is zero. So here what counts is only the, uh, the differential of one form of a three-dimensional one form, which I have written here. And why is sine is And here b contains only space derivatives. Right. Therefore, I must, a priori, I must calculate here derivatives with respect to all coordinates. Why do I skip differentiating of E with respect to time? Because this does not give contribution. And here I cannot skip the differentiation with respect to time. Therefore, this is differentiation with respect to time, dB with, uh, over dt, which I always denote with a dot, times dt. And that's all. I mean, sign, you change the sign. And time? Like for, no, first one, first term. Yeah, the, after that, you change the plus sign, but you explain, but I didn't understand. Like first, not this. What I have written here yeah. is equivalent to to that, right. provided you remember that t is x zero, x is x one, and so on and so on. This what I have written here is nothing but what I have drawn here. Very often, in many textbooks, in electrodynamics, all of the textbooks, you meet such tables. But this table is too difficult for me to remember by heart. And this I will never mix anything. I remember this by heart. And I know how to manipulate with that. Because what is dt? You know what is dt? <laughs> Differential of a well-defined function on, on space-time. Of course, if I under remember that, then I have shown you, you that I am able to reconstruct this, term, this uh, table. But I don't know it by heart. Because it was, it is too difficult for me to remember it by heart. Of course, I remember that here I have e with minus. This I remember, but this I usually do not remember. But it comes from here. Okay. Okay. So let let me. So I have shown you that vanishing of df, which is equivalent to vanishing of both this and that, because df is composed of two pieces, a piece which contains d, dt and a piece which does not contain dt. Now, vanishing of this part which does not contain dt is equivalent to divergence of b equals zero. This I have shown. Now I am going to show you that vanishing of that, or that, oh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, an error, because it is plus, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. This formula, this equals zero, which is equivalent to this formula is 
equivalent, and as we will see soon, to the Faraday uh, ha, uh, law. How you, do you call this law? Magnetic induction, yeah, law. That if you move the magnet, or if you have a closed circuit, and if the flux, magnetic flux through this uh, circuit changes, then uh, the um, electromotoric force is induced within this circuit. Yeah? So this is an integral version of this law. And now if you co uh, compute it for very small circuits, infinitesimal, then this corresponds to that. Precise. Of course, this minus star depends upon the convention. Both for a convention. First of all, convention for the current, because a priori, you don't know what does it mean that current, electric current is goes this way and not this way. This depends upon convention. Once people have called uh, some electric charges which we meet in nature positive and they say, ah, electric current is when positive charges go in this direction. But this is a convention because from the very beginning the fact that the electron is negative, has negative charge is just a convention. But okay, this convention has been chosen and we agree with that convention. I am not a revolutionary fellow and I am not going to change the convention. So this is one convention. The other convention is because what, what counts is a uh, flux. Flux is some two-dimensional uh, uh, two-dimensional uh, integral. And how the two-dimensional integral is related with the orientation with the two-dimensional surface and how to uh, how to associate it with the vector is again a convention. Usually we have uh, very often, okay, very often, not in Great Britain because they, they, they very often use um, different screws. In my country, where I have a screw, then in order to put it in, I do this way, yeah? And this is one convention. But in the United Kingdom, they very often use different, that in order to, to move screw in this direction, you have to do this way. And some people have some, say, faculty to recognize it. For instance, I am not a good mechanician. I am not able to repair a car. But I never mix those things. When I have a screw, I know that I must go this way. And I have a son who is extremely clever mechanician. He is able to repair a car, but he always ha has a problem. Ah, have I to do this way or this way? Or for instance, when I want to unscrew the screw, you take a, how you call it, screwdriver, yeah? And now, what to do? I know very well. To unscrew, I must do this way. But he always has to, like with 
musical ability. Some people have the, them, some don't. Okay, so you see that this sign relies upon some conventions. But I follow most of the conventions, but even in the United Kingdom, when they have different screws, but as far as the magnetic uh, field is understood, they, the theoretical physicists follow the same convention. So <laughs> this is not... Okay, let me calculate it. So D uh, E is equal E X D X plus E Y D Y plus E Z D Z. And now what is D E? In three dimensions, yeah? Because I have all this, what I am doing, I am always separating time from space. The derivative of D with respect to the T doesn't enter into the game, it drops out because there will be two T. And from here, I think the derivative of D with respect to space. Yeah? Okay. So, what I do? First, I have to write down dx ex times dx. Ah, but this vanishes because this must be multiplied again by dx. Therefore, it doesn't pay off to differentiate. Yeah, differentiation of ex with respect to x drops out. Right? Therefore, we have dy e x dy times what was there? dx plus dz e x dz times what was there? dx. Here. I take the total derivative of E Y, which means D X E Y D X and times what was there. Right? Now the derivative of Y uh, E Y with respect to D Y drops out. Yeah, because I will have the dy, dy. So this drops out. And the last term will be the last from the second term. dz e y dz dy. And finally this. Plus dx e z dx dz and plus dy ez dy dz. But now Look, this term and this term are the same, with the only difference that here we have dz, dy dz and here we have dz dy which is minus <coughs> dy dz, right? So we may collect these two, and I will use equal 
dy y z and here I will change the same because I won't have dy dz so I must write down minus right minus d z e y d y d z okay now this term the x and this term again they are proportional with the only difference that dy dx is minus dx dy. So I may collect them, so I will have dx is y and here I will put minus because I want to have dx dy minus dy e x and now dx dy maybe it is not nice that I have changed that and finally I have this term and that term I should have written them in different order, but doesn't matter. So I have dz e x, and here I will put it also in this, this order. So I will write minus dx e z dz. Okay, so we have deciphered this and B dot, now you remember that B was <laughs> B x D x, uh, sorry, D y D z plus B y D z dx plus b z dx dy so this was b and what is b dot b dot is a, of course when I differentiate with respect to time this the coordinates do not change so b dot is just dot derivatives with respect to time, right? So, so I have b dot equal minus d. So, so I I see here is that, and I see that b dot bx dot is what is that? it is the curl of e and step by step we simply see that this is nothing that if we work in Cartesian coordinates where um, determinant of the metric is my, is one which means that b script is equal to b uppercase then this is nothing that equal uh, minus curl of So this is, yeah, you see that this is 
precisely the curl of, of it. This is the, the X component of the curl. Stupidly, I have written, <laughs> as a second line, I have written Z component, yeah, because this is the third component of the curl, and this is the second component of the curl. Yeah? So you see that vanishing of DF means, first of all, Gauss law for magnetic field and nothing but the Faraday magnetic induction. But the superiority of this notation is that it is it works in any system of coordinates. But, okay. Now, I have a tendency, of, of course, if you need a break, I may do a break, but if you don't need, I will continue, because, okay, so, what about, The other. So, in electromagnetic field is encoded in principle by two uh, differential forms, and the second differential form which enters into the game is the following: dT times h. This is magnetic induction field plus no no this is magnetic field whereas B was magnetic induction excuse and this is the electric induction and again, again D F is as before minus now minus D T D H plus dt d dot when I differentiate with respect to time the same calculus as before and plus d d which is dt times d dot minus dh plus d where d is as, as before d is nothing but dx dy dz plus d y d z d x plus d z d x d y. And now as before we know that this is nothing but the <coughs> divergence. Yeah? D we have already calculated it for here, you see, we just change the letter B magnetic induction into D electric induction, and DB is nothing but the divergence type. Yeah, it is, it is divergence of D times dx dy. How do you come to this equation? That's X. The first equation. Uh, the, yes, I, but I don't understand what is the question. Like, how do you come to this equation? From, how do you come to this equation? The, the ah. first 
No, I, I don't ca calculate this. I uh, introduce this f, and but, but I will soon um, deepen slightly this. So at the beginning, I propose to take this to four, this to four, like. I have proposed to take this form or this table. In fact, at the very beginning, in paper by Einstein, this appeared, and only later the mathematicians have discovered that this is nothing but this form. Okay, there is this second form, and I will. Uh, Soon I will discuss the status of this form. So at, at, the, at this moment just, just take it for granted that four electromagnetic fields, namely E, H, D capital and B capital, may be encoded by those two differential forms. And in Maxwell electrodynamics, we know that E is equal to, to D, B is equal to H, and so on. This I will <coughs> discuss later. But what is, what is that we already know that this, so, so this is not zero, this is just the uh, divergence of D no, times this. And this is precisely D dot minus DH. This is, okay. So this is not zero, but this is due to Gauss law, it is equal to uh, charge density. Of course, here again there is some problem with conventions, because the, there are essentially two possible conventions in electrodynamics. The one convention is divergence of d equal rho, and the other convention is 4 pi rho. Yeah? Of course, it doesn't, any convention is equally good. Some, uh, this 4 pi, we cannot el eliminate it everywhere because either it appears here and if I don't put it here that it will um, arise in the um, Kepler law, law that, that the field of, uh, of a charge is not 1 over r square but 1 over 4 pi 1 r square somewhere this 4 pi must appear, but let me use this convention. This convention is some, uh, sometimes uh, called heaviside convention. It doesn't matter. And this is, so this is when written in Cartesian uh, coordinates, this is d dot minus and we have already seen that this d one form is nothing by the curl, right? So this is minus uh, curl of h and this is equal of course to minus j. 
Ja? So this two so these are two inhomogeneous Maxwell equations. Inhomogeneous, which means that some differential operator acting on the field is not equal to zero, but is equal to sources, because both rho and j are treated as, a, as sources of electromagnetic field. Yeah? So finally, we conclude that df is equal minus dt j plus plus uh, rho dx dy d z where again this j is not a vector but this is a uh, vector density of course because otherwise no? so this so all together we we divide a four dimensional object which is rho and j and this is called uh, this is called four uh, current yeah so j mu equal <coughs> so j zero equal rho whereas j j k is equal j k and this is and this way we may write j the, the four dimensional current yeah, so the uh, charge density and electric current are together combined into a, a single four-dimensional object and this is very useful because now we we know how to how they transform if we pass to different uh, coordinate system yeah we just transform those axes, y's, and, and so on. Yeah? Now, what is... So this is four, tar four current. So we see that finally we have combined four Maxwell equations into two lines, yeah? namely df equals zero and df equal j. j in electrodynamics is considered as given, yeah, because very often we solve such problems that both uh, electric charge density and currents are produced by our machinery and we try to calculate the evolution of the electromagnetic field. So we solve this uh, equation. So Euler equations are just written in this form. But of course, this is not sufficient because we still, because 
uh, we would have two uh, equations for four objects. A priori, what happens, what enters here is the field, the electric field and magnetic density, whereas here is magnetic field and electric density. And now, to close everything is to, roughly speaking, to say that E is equal D and H is equal B, but it can, and this is very easy to write down in uh, Cartesian coordinates, but such a, a priori, you cannot uh, write down that uh, vector field is equal to vector density. Yeah? Therefore, to close this, we need a metric. Because otherwise, there is a difference and you cannot say that this is equal to that, this is equal to that. But observe that till now, in order to write down these equations, we don't need any structure of space-time. Metric is not necessary. Metric is not necessary. But it, but it is not yet the entire story. These are Maxwell equations, but if you don't know metric tensor, then you cannot do anything, anything. Of course, you know a little bit. But for instance, the field equations, you cannot solve, in, for, for example, initial value problem. Because there are too many unknowns for these equations. In order to close the theory, you must find relation between this and that. By the way, have you any experience with, with uh, hydrodynamics or uh, continuous me media? Then the th mechanics of continuous media, you, in mechanics of continuous media, there are two objects, stress and strain. Strain is the deformation of the body and stress is a collection of forces, internal forces. And there are kinetic, kinematic equations about strain, kinematic equations about stress, but you cannot solve anything unless you know the equation which is called stress, stress, strain relation, strain-stress relation. And stress-strain relation is somehow, is something like hook law, which tells you that if you deform something, how much stress appears there. And this strain-stress relation is just the the, tells you how uh, something about the, the material. So, and the same is here. You may consider this as a strain, this as stre stress, and you need to have stress-strain relation. <laughs> and in Maxwell e electrodynamics, where in principle this is equal that and this is equal to that is only one possibility. We know Maxwell electrodynamics because we know how electromagnetic field behaves when it is relatively weak. We have never experienced a very strong field because we would be killed by that. So all electromagnetic fields which we know are relatively weak. And for weak fields, 
This relation is linear. But maybe that for really strong fields, like for instance in, in uh, near to galactic centers or, or so, maybe that this relation is no longer uh, linear. You know, the beginning of physics, what was physics four years, uh, 400 years ago? This was uh, observation of phenomena and we have tried always to separate the, the the input and the output. Yeah, for example, hook law. We uh, somehow um, deform the material. So this is the input, deformation, and the output is the force, or vice versa. We apply a force, this is an input, and what is the output? The deformation. The role of input and output, of course, may be exchanged in different, in different um, experiments. Yeah? But roughly speaking, there is one side and the other side. You know that something causes something else. And the role of a physicist was to find the relation between input and output. And of course, for small uh, deformations, the, uh, the relation is always proportional, like every function, when you consider it in very small uh, interval, is linear, maybe extrapolated by linear function. This is the idea of uh, derivative, yeah? So also here, Maybe that this relation is linear, but people have considered nonlinear electrodynamics, and this language which I have developed here is very well adapted to the language of nonlinear electrodynamics. For example, it seems that in uh, particle physics, the one version of nonlinear electrodynamics, namely born in felt. Born in felt electrodynamics, which is nonlinear, it seems that it is very important and it is you see near to uh, uh, atomic kernel, the fields are very strong. And we try to understand what happens there, but still it is not well known. So some people think that maybe nonlinear electrodynamics will replace the linear because linear every linear uh, relation between input and output, we have a feeling that this is just an approximation, that because geometric relations are, are never linear. So up to now I have developed a language which is very well adapted, but let me come back to the Earth and I will remain on the level of linear electrodynamics. In linear electrodynamics, E is equal to D, so, but D is nothing but 1 over, uh, 1 over square root of G times D, but Again, a metric is necessary because BK, 
B has indices upstairs, right? And E has indices downstairs because it is a covector. It is multiplied. You remember E was E dx. Lower indice index goes together with dxk, whereas upper index was goes together with d over dx. But fortunately, this is nothing but e k uh, e l g k l. We have a metric which can be used to exchange covectors into vectors and vice versa. So finally, the correct, the correct version of this trivial uh, law, which I have written a couple of weeks ago, that E is equal D. So this is correct if we work in Cartesian coordinates and we identify vectors with covectors, but if we work in any coordinates and we do, must make distinction between vectors and covector, then of course we uh, multiply everything by the inverse metric and finally the correct version would, would be the following, that EL is equal uh, EL is equal DL, DL, and so if I want to lower indices, so I will put LK. First of all, Sorry? This is the metric. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is L. So I. I no, the letter. Letter B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, of course. I cannot write this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Agree. So this will be, if I lower in the index, then I must put in every. This G everywhere. No, no, no. You have to be uh, B L. Like it is. You have to be the magnetic field. Excuse. Excuse. <laughs> okay. The, but, but again, I cannot only apply G to one side of the equation. Yeah. So this will be K. And this will be K. Yeah? So finally, the correct version of the relation between E and D, E is a covector field, whereas D is a vector density. So first of all, I must manufacture a vector field from the vector density by dividing it by square root of g. So this way I obtain d uh, with uh, upper index and this is already vector and now I manufacture from this vector field the covector. So this is the stress-strain relation in Maxwell electrodynamics. Okay, but so I'm slowly going to the end of today's talk, but you see that, an, that I have divided electrodynamics all laws of electrodynamics into two parts. One part which does not depend upon the metric. I may, may forget. This is universal. In any 
electrodynamics, also nonlinear, field equations look like, like that. But in order to have, yeah, like in elastomechanics, if you know stress and strain, if you know strain, it depends upon deformation. Now stress is uh, related with forces, which you act forces, but still you cannot solve equations if you don't know uh, what the material you have in, at hand. Yeah? And what does it mean to know the material? For instance, for a, uh, for a road, elastic road, you must know this uh, hook law. The, so the relation between stress and strain. Here in electrodynamics, 